Okay, good. Okay, so hey everybody, welcome to Network for Law Students LLC. I'm Randy, and I'm so, so excited to have Jennifer Duclair, the Far Grand Mentor. Um, so hey, Jennifer, thank you so much for doing this. Oh, you're so welcome. It's a pleasure for me to be here and to contribute to the people who are following you and learning from you. Thanks. Um, so what was your, um, let me just start before we dive in. Um, so how did you get into being the bar exam mentor? Like what's your background? What did you, where did you go to school? Yeah, that's a, that is an involved question. So um, personally, after, uh, let's see, uh, going to school, I was one of those high achieving students, um, started college when I was 15, burned through undergrad, and by the time I was 19 going on 20, I was um, tapped out on school and needed to do something different. So I traveled around the world. I taught as a teacher in Korea. I lived overseas. And finally ready to get my life, you know, get back to adult life. <laughs> I came back to the U.S. and started law school and joined the military and went down that road. Now, I um, sat for the bar, I mean, sat for the LSAT, took it, passed it, didn't have a question in my mind. I was going to a Florida school because I'm in Florida. Mm -hmm. And I, I got into the University of Florida as well as several other schools. And I remember actually debating which one I would go to. And the um, I was in the legal unit in the military. And my fellow, well, not fellow, the officers, attorneys, they graduated from UF. And they looked at me and they're like, you're even considering other options? Are you on drugs? <laughs> and um, I said, okay, well, I guess that makes my decision. So it, it was really a benefit to be around people who are already attorneys because I was a paralegal in the legal unit. I was surrounded by Florida attorneys who were officers in the JAG Corps. Right. And they all said, go to UF. So I went to UF, a top tier school. And as of right now, they're climbing to be one of the T14. They're like really pushing hard, which only makes it look better that you graduated from there, right? <laughs> uh, but I ran into a roadblock with the bar exam. Like with all the, the speeding through life and successes that I'd had and and all of that, um, I never expected to hit a wall with the bar exam, but I did. I thought it would be easy peasy, I'll be done, you know, nothing to it, but I failed my first time. And I was shocked. I was floored, I was devastated. I didn't even know how to comprehend what had just occurred here, because I never failed at anything before in my life. You know, you talk about the, the girl who had her AA degree, you know, at 17, you know, and was moving on, you know, as a college sophomore. And, and who had a whole other career, you know, I was a teacher and um, had done so many other things that I just, academically speaking, never expected to see this happen. And I thought I'd just regroup and do it again. I just must have missed a few things here and there. I still didn't, um, I wasn't concerned because it was a fluke, right? But then I failed it again. And now I was worried right. because what? <laughs> So I, I really did have to take a beat, not only for, you know, financial reasons where I had to like, now I have to go back to the real world and actually get a job and work. I didn't expect to be out of the game this long, uh, but I also really needed to figure out what went wrong. And because I never expected for anything to go wrong, I'd never fortified myself and gotten the knowledge to find out what could go wrong on the bar exam. What do you need to do right. ahead of time to make sure you've covered all your bases? I just purely saw it as just another test. Mm -hmm. So I actually didn't know what to do. And I kept just kind of running around in circles. And I knew it wasn't smart to do the same thing I'd done before. Right. But I didn't know what to do. So I just distracted myself, quite honestly. I was like, okay, it's time to start working on my relationships. It's time to start working on, you know, my salary, my job. I was really hitting it hard at that law firm that I was working at. Mm -hmm. but I was distracting myself. Um, but thankfully, one of those distractions turned it out to be exactly what I needed. Um, in the middle of it all, I signed up for a bar review course. And I made the investment because, hey, this is my future. I was serious about getting this done. I made the investment to get private one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. support in that bar review course. Right. And as I was going to my sessions, the tutor told me straight up. He was giving me suggestions. He was telling me strategies. He was 
And I was like, no, but this and that. And I had all kinds of reasons and excuses. And, and he sent probably the whole picture and he told me, listen, you've got something blocking you. I don't know what it is, but I can't help you while you're like this. So go fix it mm -hmm. and come back when you're done. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so indignation, all kinds of thoughts. But, you know, years later, looking back, gratitude for him just being able to be blunt and straight up and tell me, I can't help you. You know, um, but most people would pander and, you know, hey, she's paying me, da da da, da. But, mm -hmm. you know, honesty was good for me. And I'm grateful for that. Thankfully, because I was distracting myself at the same time with like relationship stuff, I was in a coaching program okay. on the relationship side, right? And um, I happened to win a free 30 minute call with the coach. And uh, we ventured into the area of money. And of course, money is tied to the fact that I haven't passed the bar exam yet. Mm -hmm. And she really helped me walk through my blocks. And it turns out that it wasn't about the bar exam at all. Right. I had something going on in the back of my mind mm -hmm. that to a part of me, the part of me that wanted to keep me safe, stopping just short of passing the bar exam was the goal. Right. Because of that thing that was in the back of my mind. So she helped shed light on what that was, which I could have never seen on my own because I didn't know enough to ask myself the tough questions and to probe for the truth and to go to that scary place that you didn't really want to look at. But she made me think about it. She made me look at it. And I realized what I was deathly afraid of and that actually failing the bar was the lesser of two evils mm. compared to that fear. And once she just shone that light for me, it's like all the barriers fell. And I was able to tell myself, self, that's a post-bar exam problem. We will deal with that post-bar exam because now I know what the problem is, right? And I was able to just like table it right. and say, let's cross this bridge and then we will face that problem later. Sure enough, I did have to face that problem later, mm -hmm. but I passed the bar first. Okay. <laughs> so that's when I realized that there was a huge piece to bar exam prep missing. Mm -hmm. And it was the mindset piece. Right. Now, for a lot of us, the mindset won't trip us up when we go to take the bar. Okay. We'll be able to sail through the first time and call it a day. But for a whole lot of others, mindset was a problem before you even went to law school. Mm -hmm. Stuff started piling up while you went through law school. Yeah. And there's all kinds of things back there that could be pumping your brakes when it comes to passing the bar that you're not even thinking about because you're just focused on academics. Right. And when I realized what a huge shift, because I am smart. I was not the, you know, incapable, you know, person. Mm -hmm. I had high marks on everything. Failing the bar multiple times didn't, was not about academics. And once I found that mindset piece, everything was easy. Now, of course, my tutor taught me some really great academic techniques, things that I needed to know about my, how my brain works. And, and I later learned in life as I help bar takers, I learned that there's some personality aspects to how you take the bar and how you study for it as well that spell the difference between whether it's easy or not. So taking all that together, I decided then to become a mentor to bar exam takers. Hmm. We have your academic resources. There's thousands of them, but there are very few, if any, people out there that are working with you one-on-one -on -one to help when it comes to the mindset piece of the bar. Mm -hmm. Things like, oh, family is getting in my way and I can't say no, or time constraints, or I just keep failing inexplicably and I don't know why. And there are uh, a lot of back of the mind issues that, mm -hmm. you know, procrastination or stagnation or the anxiety and pressure mounts. And then we trace why and we get to those, those things back there that nobody's talking about. You're not getting classes on that in law school. There's no chapter on that in your bar book and nobody's giving you a lecture on that during your, your prep season, right? right? So you're left on your own to deal with it. And, and that's what I stepped, decided to step in the gap to do is to help bar takers not only figure out the best way, the best study schedule for themselves because everybody is different. Your study schedule is going to be unique to you. And so I help people build a tailored bar study schedule because that honestly takes care of half of the mindset problems. 
Mm-hmm. Half of the time, the mindset issue is because you're trying to study in isolation where you're not an isolation person. You're community oriented. We cover that in my five day challenge. If you're community oriented, studying in isolation is a detriment to your soul. You will like be sucked dry emotionally right. and run out of steam, you know, but you have to know what study personality you are, you know, that you have. So that took care of half of the mindset problems, you know, covering that arena. And then we're left with the real stuff. Okay, the stuff that people say, okay, sign me up. I need to work with you. I need to coach with you. We need to get through this. Right. But first we get that part out of the way. And honestly, once people get that personalized study schedule done, most of the time the the issues are resolved. People have been able to go through and pass. And I get tons of emails from, you know, this free event where people are like, that made the difference in me passing or failing. So this is why I'm here. This is why I do what I do. <laughs> I hope that answered your question. Glad that you're doing it. Um, so what was your biggest challenge besides the mindset in taking the bar exam yourself? Well, honestly, it, it was the lack of knowledge. Right? It was the lack of knowledge. Uh, the first time I sat to take the bar exam, I didn't know how my brain prefers to work. So I forced myself to listen to hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of lectures. Mm-hmm. And that was absolutely not efficient for my brain. Yeah. But I didn't know that. Right. So that was that was the big culprit the first time. Had I known how my brain likes to work and I studied in that way and had the courage to study in that way because we receive our generic study schedule and we just like, okay, we have to check off all these boxes because that's what the big people said. Right. right. But if it doesn't work for you, it doesn't work for you. And all you do is end up retaking the bar, you know, at your own expense. Yeah. So the biggest challenge for me was ignorance. Okay. Honestly, not knowing. I simply didn't know. And that's what, because academically, come on, you graduated law school, you're smart. Right. <laughs> you are smart enough to pass this bar exam. You graduated from law school. It wasn't the academics. It was, it was not knowing the other stuff. Ignorance was the biggest challenge. Definitely. Um, so is, are there any tips that you would give um, someone taking a uh, UBE exam versus the non-UBE exam? Or are, are they pretty much the same? Honestly, because I don't teach the academics of the bar exam, but I do have someone coming on staff who does. Okay. We're becoming more, more inclusive. So we'll have mindset is always my main focus because I say there's thousand and one academic materials out there, but sometimes it's good to have a one stop shop. So we are bringing academics in as well, but I don't have tips to differentiate between the two types of exams because I haven't taken them. You know, my, I just took the MBE myself. Yep. And we came in later and um and i've only focused on you know everything but the academics when it came to the bar your schedule your mindset your family situations even you know helping you to sort out your future right and um i've left the academics up to the to the experts in that area i'm the expert in the mindset <laughs> okay gotcha <laughs> um, so would you suggest people cut off all social media while they're studying for the bar I'm sorry to interrupt you. That is the worst advice ever. Mm-hmm. Don't get me started. Okay. So, <laughs> I have a whole YouTube video on why cutting off social media before the bar exam is a bad idea. It's on my YouTube channel. Um, and if you type in bar exam mentor anywhere on the internet, you'll find me. Um, but especially today, back when I was in, ooh, that makes me sound so old. But back <laughs> when I was in law school, we normally like would cut off Facebook through law school and beyond because of the fact that we're in the attorney realm. We don't want things on Facebook that would show up during an interview, things like that, right? Your opposing counsel is doing background research on you. You don't want your personal stuff Mm -hmm. popping up on Facebook. So it was normal to just cut off Facebook at 1L orientation. However, the world is different today, okay? And we, Facebook has adjusted itself so just to be an essential piece of people's lives. It is, they have scientists hired who spend all day and night trying to figure out how to get you addicted to the platform, how to get you to want to stay there longer. 
So the fact is that if you cut off Facebook suddenly, you will go through withdrawals. That's number one. Mm-hmm. Number two, some people, and, and you'll find out if you're this person, if you find out what your study personality is, um, and we cover that in my challenge, but some people need that human connection throughout, especially in a high stress situation like bar exam. Yeah. And sometimes the only way you get that human connection, especially today in, in current times, right. will be through the internet. Mm-hmm. So it's not about cutting off social media. It's about amending how you use your social media. I like that. Right. <laughs> and so that's why, um, you know, to, to push out a bad habit, you don't cut it off. You replace it. Okay. Right? right. So if you're trying to lose weight, you put all the healthy foods on your plate first, eat that first, and then look at the junk and see if you still have room for it. Mm-hmm. Right. You didn't say no junk. You just said, I'm going to eat this first. Right. And it makes it so much easier. So, you know, I offer within like it, within my programs and in my groups, I offer the fact of the ability for people to connect with others who are taking the bar exam mm-hmm. and to connect in a meaningful way. So I teach you how to have these conversations where you're actually supporting each other. Right. Nobody's your counselor but everybody can lend like good meaning support. And so switching out how you use the social media is what's recommended, not necessarily just the use of it. Some people are on there and they say, um, seeing other people post about their bar exam progress or post about how many pages they read today and all that stuff makes them feel inadequate, like they're not doing enough. And so they cut off their social media because of that. No, snooze that person. (laughs) and if you don't know yet about how facebook algorithms work and instagram and other places the more you look at a person's posts the more of their posts they'll show you Mm -hmm. right the more you look at a certain type of news the more of that news you'll see so a little bit of self-control don't click on their stuff Right. Just keep on scrolling and mm-hmm. click on the things of, of people that you you want to see and you want to um, engage in. And on places like LinkedIn or um, even Facebook, I'm regularly posting encouraging things right about, you know, your bar exam season and things like that. So find the people like us who are posting encouraging things that you can expose yourself to and then connect to people who are walking the same road you're walking and that you feel a connection with, right? That you're in it together, a community kind of thing. This is how we use social media. Anybody who's irking you, no qualms about snoozing them or even unfriending them. I unfriend people like this, okay? (laughs) This is like, oh, I don't want to see that in my feed. Unfriend, okay? They don't know the difference. They've got thousands of friends too, okay? But this is what I suggest as opposed to cutting off social media. Um, Unless if you have not been using social media, right? If you haven't been using it, it's not an issue. But if, if social media has been a big part of your life, I don't recommend cutting it off. I recommend changing the way that you use it and, and probably stay away from the weekly updates to thousands of people about how you're doing on the bar because I feel like it creates undue pressure. Exactly. Um, some people work like that like if they're action oriented that's another category of personality so you kind of find that out about yourself inside the challenge but if you're action oriented and you need that kind of self goading to get going then that's good for you but a lot of people are like three-fourths of the population are not that way and so you you kind of want to stay away from having all eyes on you during the study season and you just use social media for your your heart's filling you know your little fill up before you get back to your Um, studies it's a great reward too after your study sessions you know put your phone on airplane mode study when I finish all my study sessions I get to go on social media for however long that's a great you know way to use it okay so we touched on this a little bit um in the beginning but so should bar examiners just blindly follow the bar prep program's recommended schedule or should they create their own I I after it's been six months of running this challenge. I've probably served, I've served hundreds of people in this challenge now. Um, I don't think I would ever recommend you blindly follow the recommended schedule. The reason is because at the very least, you need to know how your brain prefers to learn. Mm -hmm. 
so that you can give yourself an out when you zoned out on those lectures 500 times in one sitting <laughs> and instead of beating yourself up you can actually well my brain doesn't do audio and you know that and so you understand why you zoned out so even if you're going to stick to it because you have to do what the big people said okay the fact is that at the very least you know why you're not learning from this method right you know, and so that you don't have to think there's something wrong with you your brain just doesn't function that way so at the very least find out how your brain likes to learn how you like to function in life so that you can understand why bar study seems like such a chore and drudgery to you maybe because you cut off everybody who you love and now you're isolated but your heart really needs community in order for you to feel good right um and so there's lots of of the main thing is knowing how your brain likes to work okay you can take their schedule but just be uh, mindful of pouring more of your energy into the recommended activities that actually work for your brain type mm -hmm. as opposed to thinking that you know you have to do everything the way they set out because the fact is that that only works for some of the population if your bar study is really majoring on lectures that only helps you know the segment of the population that really depends on audio learning otherwise you've just wasted four hours right you could have been doing something else with it and now after the lectures is when you get to the activities that do fit your brain type except now you're tired and zoned out and probably you know feeling bad right and so at least if you take the time to learn that you can adjust what you focus on within the generic study schedule okay. now a lot of people come in through the challenge they take the generic study schedule they learn about themselves um, and then they look at the generic study schedule and they cross things off and they replace them with learning activities that work for them. Right. At the very least, do that, right? Okay. But if you're a non-traditional student, meaning you're raising children or you're working or you're juggling, I've seen all kinds of situations. <laughs> if you're not the person who can sit home and study for eight to 10 to 12 hours per day because you have a real life happening, mm -hmm. then those study schedules aren't going to work for you anyway. Right. And so you really do need to start from scratch in a way that you are sure that it'll work for you. And at, you know, to that end, I suggest, yes, build your own study schedule, especially if you're coming out of the gate, not a traditional, you know, bar prepper, you know, not a full-time student type of person. So, um, so how do they start? Uh, making their own schedule? Well, um, I, I run a challenge for that, right? The right. whole goal is to, like, it's, it's over five days. It's about 10 minutes of task for five days. And by the end of the five days, you have your personalized study schedule. Okay. Um, I like to start with knowledge base. You have to know how, how you learn, you know, how you like to learn right. and um, how you like to move through life. Right? because they might have, you know, sit down for six hours and study. If you're an action-oriented person, you can't do that. Right. You're going to need to have something fun and sandwich your study time in between fun activities that you like to go do. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to study for, you know, three hours, and then I have to go, you know, play with my nieces, and then I'm going to study for another three hours, and then I have, you know, a, a virtual happy hour, <laughs> you know, <laughs> playing with my friends, you know. And so if you're an action-oriented person, you know, if you're, if you're what I call the blueprint type person, you need like the structure and the, the lists and the strategy, then you have another way that you're going to go about bar prep. So the first two days inside the challenge, we spend learning who you are and how you like to live, you know, your life, mm -hmm. because that's going to affect how you study right. and how you feel about studying because the feelings are everything. If you hate studying every time you sit down to do it, that's going to have an impact on your academic progress. Definitely. Okay? So we, we cover that and then we cover how your brain likes to work in the first two days. Then we go on to help you pick the bar study aids that work for your personality plus brain type. Okay. Once you have those bar study aids or courses or whatever, then the last two days we actually map out what days you're going to study what and for how long and what learning techniques you're going to use when you sit down to study. Right. 
it's not sit down and, and watch four hours of lectures because you know that you're not an audio person. Let's say you're a visual and kinesthetic person. You decide, okay, I'm going to sit down and mind map everything I know about the topic. You know, that, that's a completely different, your, your study schedule will look completely different from the next person because of what you know about yourself personally now. Right. And so the way I suggest that you go about building a study schedule is to go through the challenge, right? And get yourself that information. I actually am starting one in a few days, but the, the link always stays live. You could get on the wait list or you can join it live if we're actually having one. But if you're not learning personally how you, you know, if you're not learning about who you are, what your thumbprint of academia is, like how does my brain work? How does my, you know, heart work? How do I get that knowledge and apply it to my study schedule? Mm -hmm. Then honestly, you might as well just stick to the generic one <laughs> because, yeah. because if it's not tailored to you, then, then it's a hit or miss. And that's why some people find some of our study aids work beautifully for me and another person found that it sucked. The reason is because their learning type and the way that they move through life fits with that bar study aid and you're a different person from them. Right. And so knowing about yourself first is where you start when it comes to building the study plan. And then you know naturally which one is going to work for you because now you know who you are okay. as far as studying is concerned. Does that make sense? It does make sense. Yeah. Um, so what's a major pitfall you see bar examiners take besides not knowing their, their, how they study? Um, it's varied. <laughs> it's so varied because I've seen a lot. Yeah. I've seen a lot when it comes. And, and the thing is, there's no cookie cutter approach. And I think maybe that is it. It's the fact that the mistake that there's a cookie cutter approach. Okay? Okay. I've seen some people do the exact same things and, it, and one person passed and the other person didn't. And I don't mean just academic approach. I'm talking, this person is cool, calm and collected the whole time. And so is that person. And so you think all things are equal, right? They're studying every day. They're checking off the boxes. They're both cool, calm, and collected. Mm -hmm. One person soars with flying colors through the bar exam, and another person fails miserably. What was the difference? Right. Well, they both appeared cool, calm, and collected, mm -hmm. but one person underneath was spending 50% of his energy shoving away all those worries. And so his energy was divided. Right. And he just ignored it. And it sabotaged him. You know, it creeps up. And when your energy is divided like that, you want to be full focus bar exam. If your energy is divided by worries of the future or of the present or what will happen if, or worries about anything really, and you're not addressing that, then you're spending half your energy just trying to maintain yourself emotionally. Same thing with isolating for the bar exam. For some people, it works beautifully. They don't really want to deal with people anyway. They don't get fed off of that. Mm -hmm. But for other people, they need that. And when they isolate, they're spending 50% of their energy trying to help themselves feel better every day. Right. And so even though they say, you know, remove distractions, this and that, the other, do not take any bar exam advice as universally applicable because it's not. And that's the biggest mistake that bar exam takers make. You need to know yourself and then filter all the advice you get through knowledge of who you are. Um, so it's easy to lose motivation, especially during these coronavirus times. Um, what was what are some of your suggestions to keep that motivation going throughout bar prep? And that's where knowing your study personality comes in. Okay. Right. Because if you know what feeds your heart, then you do it and you stay motivated. Right. <laughs> so that is, it, but it comes to self knowledge, right? So if you come through our programs and you um, the challenge. You'll learn, for example, community-oriented people, as we discussed many times, mm -hmm. they feel like elevated through that feeling of group, community, camaraderie, learning more about themselves, being there for other people, counting, you know, you count. You know, people are looking for you when it's bar prep time. It's not this horde of, you know, people, this big herd, and you're lost because you're just a number. No, yeah. you count. Somebody's looking for you. You know, hey, she didn't show up to class today, kind of thing, right? Community people. And you can have that online too. Okay. I always set up the people who into our, into our pay programs get set up as accountability buddies and things like that. So people are looking for you. Okay. That's your community, right? If you are um, 
we have other groups of people and you do a little quiz to find out you know where you where you fit in okay but if you're a certainty person you will know that it actually is good for me to have the list and the checklist and the systems and all that stuff but i have to watch out for this pitfall that goes with my personality certainty people have a hard time cutting off the studying and starting the practicing because they have to be certain of every single detail and they don't want to go practice and get it wrong. They feel like they got to get it right the first time. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so certainty people need to look out for that. And if you have an accountability buddy, or if you're like in one of our programs, I'll call you out. Hey, have you started practicing yet? Right. 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 Even in our five day challenge, we help you to, to bypass that by putting a set in stone date that you will stop reviewing and just go to the actual hand paper you know, practicing. And so, so uh, you have to know who you are so that you know how to stay motivated. Mm -hmm. Action oriented people are not going to be motivated by four hours of lectures a day. It just is not going to work. Right. Right. They're more competitive type, uh, something like, and I'm not an affiliate or endorser of any bar prep aids, but you know, if you do the little quiz in our challenge, you find out you're action oriented. The first thing I'll tell you to go do is adapt the bar, right? Because it's got the the, competi- the competitiveness to it. Mm-hmm. It's got the the ease of just swiping and you can be wherever doing it. And there have been people who use that tool and they feel like they only actually studied for two weeks to pass the bar. And it turns out they were studying for a whole year. They just didn't feel like they were studying because they were doing it according to their personality type. The part that felt like studying, you know, the drudgery part that you lose motivation during. Yeah. That part didn't fit their personality type. That was the part where they were trying to be like everyone else. Mm -hmm. And that's the only part they actually count as study time. Whereas they had been studying for a whole year. They just didn't feel like they were studying. And that's the benefit of knowing what your personality type is so that you can do the stuff that keeps you motivated. That's, you know, the long-ish answer to how to stay motivated. (laughs) Okay, got it. Uh, So we're about to wrap up the video. Um, But how can people uh, get in contact with you? jenniferduclair.com, right? I don't know if you can see my name there at the bottom of the screen, but um, jenniferduclair.com is the website. That's J-E-N-N-I-F-E-R-D-U-C-L-A-I-R.com. And there you'll be able to access, there's video resources and um, the challenge page, if you want to sign up for the challenge, is there. Um, and and that's the best way to to find me. I also have... Facebook group and a YouTube channel. If you type in Jennifer Duclair and Bar Exam Mentor in your Google search bar, you will come up with me all over the internet. <laughs> but, uh, our Facebook group is called Pass the Bar. Okay. And um, and the YouTube channel just pop in Jennifer Duclair and um, Bar Exam Mentor in YouTube, and the YouTube channel will come up for you too. You can find me on YouTube as Bar Exam Mentor. That I think that covers all the bases. Um, I don't know if you have. A chance to pop in the registration link for the challenge if people wanted to join that five-day challenge and build their their uh, definitely I just put it into the description yeah that's great so it's just jenniferduclair.com forward slash challenge dash registration okay so yeah that'll work but um, it's a free event and it's open and this is the main way people get to be in my space and mm-hmm. get the advice and the help in preparing their personal study schedule is through the challenges. It's it's the time that I take to just give to the bar exam world, you know, over the five days to teach you and then to coach you. We do have coaching sessions during the challenge as well. So that is where most people get started. And that's where I would probably suggest that your viewers go to. Okay. Great. Thank you so much for doing this. I so appreciate it. I know our viewers appreciate it too. Uh, Thank you again. Thank you for having me. I so appreciate it, Randy. Subscribe to our new YouTube channel. It's free. Networking for Law Students, LLC. Visit our website, networkingforlawstudents.com. We're on Instagram. It's Networking for Law Students 1. And Facebook is Networking for Law Students. Be sure to check out our courses on thinkific.com. We have a new and totally free study skills course that can be used for both law school exams and the bar exams.